Hello guys and girls and welcome to War Thunder. How are you going? It's Greasilla here and I hope you're all well. So, today we are on one of the new maps uh, in Naval. Um, Fang Nha Bay. Um, tropical sort of islandy sort of uh, <coughs> map layout really. A relatively big map actually which is nice. But, well, naval, what can I say about it? There's going to be some serious disparities between nations. Let me just move my mic a little bit closer, sorry. There's going to be some serious disparity between nations. Um, the Italian gunboats, for instance, although they've got some good torpedoes, they lack a lot of um, a lot of firepower that the other nations have and durability. It's a very weak ship. So we've got another Italian gunboat over there by the looks of it. But there's also a German gunboat. Now we're getting the ranging in here, and I've already fired my anti-aircraft guns and used up the ammunition. Now I've still got the 30mm uh, I think it is, 20mm sorry, the 20mm on the front to go, uh, but <coughs> It really has no ammunition load to it, and it has no <coughs> no bang to its buck. So, launching off some torpedoes there, just <coughs> into the smoke, just to try and get a kill, maybe. Can't see what's going on, though. Trying to find the enemy boat, and it's directly in front of me. And I completely missed it as I was turning. The smoke works pretty well, as you can see, um, but you do really suffer from um, the German boats. They've just got much better ammunition, much better payloads to them. Um, my torpedo went off there as well. So, there is that aspect of the ships being very unbalanced, and that comes into effect as well with the destroyers too. The Italian destroyer feels very weak compared to the American destroyer, for instance. Um, <clears throat> which, as I say, it's going to cause a lot of problems, I feel. Now we've got a uh, another gunboat over to our left there. Our right, sorry. And we'll do some shots over there. And we went a bit high, but we did get a few shots on its uh, main area. Reloading again, getting the 20 mils on target. <coughs> Trying to get the water line of the boat. As you can see there, we got a few good hits on the water line there. The anti-aircraft gun on this boat is has just got so little ammunition. Um, I can't remember if we can actually look at the stats there, but we can't. Um, it, it's almost useless. But we did manage to take out that ship by exploding its torpedo. That's where it comes into to usefulness, is just that torpedo shooting aspect of it. But the firepower of the enemy really does outmatch your own. <coughs> That's not to say that you, you won't get kills in this boat, but the majority of the time you're going to be struggling. Um, and as you can see there, the, I think they're um, possibly 20mm anti-aircraft guns on this boat. They really don't do enough damage and don't do enough uh, work really to, to do a good job. Uh, Fletcher there just took out that uh, S100, the S boat there. <coughs> So there's a plane around, so we've just got to be a bit careful of that as well. 
Um, all in all, uh, there's a lot of work to be done still in naval testing, but I feel like they're going to be releasing it very shortly, which I don't know if it's a great thing. Um, just a quick view on the inside there, as you can see, we've got some damage to the rear of the boat. One cool little thing is you do get to see where the holes are on the ship now. Uh, so when you have got holes below the waterline, you can sort of see where they're at. <coughs> so obviously more holes, the, the more problems you have with flooding. Um, uh, another thing about this Italian gunboat is it, well, a torpedo boat, should I say, it's not really a gunboat, is it's slow. This thing is sluggish. It's, compared to the other nations, it does not have that speed and maneuverability that you need. But it's not always a bad thing, I guess. Sometimes you can use it to your advantage by sneaking up on people. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, it, it's... Oh, look, the... The gameplay of naval combat is... Uh, it, it, it's kind of okay. Um, but it does really swing in the favour of one team too quickly and spawn camping is probably the biggest issue is if you get a couple of destroyers in your spawn area then that's it game over um, I don't know how they'll fix that aspect but it's something that needs to be looked at I'll be showing you a video next of the Fletcher um, just to show you the disparity between these ships really um, <clears throat> as I say, the the American destroyers do seem to have it a lot better than the um, Italian destroyers. Although the Italian ships do now actually have um, um, the armor piercing round on their uh, on their shots for the destroyer, which does help a little bit, but it's still not great um, the lack of guns on the boat does really affect it <coughs> and its survivability does feel pretty slim compared to the other ships now right here I'm actually stalking a destroyer slowly stalking a destroyer as you can see <coughs> sorry you have to forgive me my throat's a little bit rough today destroy to our right as well now the one of the in <coughs> sorry one of the things with this boat is you do have some very good torpedoes at the back but the front torpedoes are a little bit weak in all honesty they're only the 350 millimeter I think the rear ones with that nice gold finish to the back are the 450 millimeter torpedoes and those things are pretty deadly So there's a destroyer over to the left, and we're going to be heading to Charlie to try and cap it off. <clears throat> One of the things though in these little patrol boats is you don't have any serious range for efficiency on other boats. So again, that can really affect the gameplay. Um, it's almost like there's two separate battles going on, there's the torpedo boats going on in the between the islands and the destroyers going on out in the, the actual ocean itself and again that does cause some disparity in the gameplay because the um, torpedo boats really do struggle when out on the open waters uh, because the destroyers are just so much stronger than them now we've got a destroyer coming to our right here So, we're going to have to get close to him to do anything. <coughs> because our guns aren't really going to do much to a destroyer in this respect. Um, interestingly, some of the, the patrol boats, you can actually do some decent damage to destroyers with when you've got the 40mm guns, things like that. 
Um, of course, it's not going to be nearly as damaging as the 120 millimeters that the destroyers have, but you do do some okay damage. Um, you can cause some serious problems if you can get close, but your main sort of task is to really torpedo them. And torpedoing, it, it's a little bit better than it was, but it still has some problems to it. Uh, in this sort of fast-paced gameplay, torpedoing is not the most effective way. Now, luckily, this uh, German destroyer, the Z-20 there, is engaged with uh, one of my friendly destroyers, so he's not paying attention to me. Uh, one salvo of those guns will pretty much destroy me, of course, because I'm just a tiny harbour patrol vessel, really. But if you can get a torpedo strike, then you will do well. Now, the Italian torpedoes are relatively fast. Um, it's something I did notice when using them. Um, I was surprised at how fast they actually were. So I got a nice bow strike, a nice midship strike here. Um, and I launched another torpedo pretty much dead set on him. A bit of a suicide run there, but managed to take him down. <clears throat> As I said, unfortunately with the Italian boats, the the first torpedo salvo you fire, unless you get both on target, they're not going to be enough to take out a destroyer. So ideally you need to use those rear torpedoes to do much damage, and that can be a little bit annoying. Last but not least, we're taking out the P-108 here, uh, just really to see how well it does against ships, because this sh plane was designed to take out boats, specifically destroyers. Because of the, their uh, general lack of anti-aircraft guns, uh, it was considered a good option to have a 105mm, I think it is, cannon on the front here. Now, of course, with the actual um, true to life one, it's got a proper aim on it. So almost like a tank aiming system on it, which makes life a lot easier. But as you see here, we get a lot of AAA fire coming up to us, and that's because of the automatic systems. And it does make life very hard. But as you can see, we do do some serious damage when we hit, but you're only gonna get about one or two hits in, in all honesty, when using this gun. And unless you can get below the waterline, you're not going to do too much damage. Which is a real shame, um, because it would be nice if this thing was an absolute beast towards towards enemy ships. Um, as you see, our rear 50 cals do more damage in general, because we take out a lot of the deck crew. We also do some damage to the, um, the actual armour of the ship as well, with the 50 cals. It's it's one of those things in this mode that makes little to no sense. Um, I think planes with a 50 cal on board are probably going to do more damage than planes with a decent sized cannon, simply because the armor's so thin, the 50 cal is just going to go straight through. Now, trying to get shots on target here of the PRY7, but not a chance we get hit pretty quickly. And that's the end of this game, really. Um, I don't think I respawned here at all. It was just pretty much done. Pretty much done for me. Uh, as you see here, just sinking away. So what we'll do now is we'll just hop to the uh, next game in the Fletcher.
and we are back and welcome back to the Fletcher class so this is the nice big American destroyer and boy this ship really can take a pounding um, the interesting thing as well is we'll turn off the uh, name markers quickly just because realistic battle in naval combat don't get name markers which makes it a lot trickier much like ground battles as well and it's something i don't understand for air realistic battles is why they have name tags on for planes um because it really does make life a lot harder for uh trying to sneak around or things like that because you get spotted so quickly obviously the radar system makes sense but um the name tag thing, I'm not a huge fan of it, personally. Um, but in naval combat, it does make it quite difficult. As you can see here, it's very hard to see ships, especially when they're quite a, a long distance away. Um, we're shooting, I think, around about 9,500 metres here. So a pretty vast distance of shooting, which is what you want in naval combat. Now, I was messing around a little bit with the manual measurement, the manual uh, targeting system, and I found I had a bit more success with that. The automatic targeting system is a little bit iffy sometimes. Now, one thing you can see in the night combat is when a ship is bow onto you, it's very tricky to see it. You can only really see the smokestack, uh, but once it turns to the side and you get a little bit more light to the side of it, it is a bit more visible. So we'll turn the name tags back on. So we're firing off long range at that destroyer there. Shots are way off first of all. But naval combat shooting was very much like that. There was lots of getting your eye in on the target. Uh, it was more about getting the shots on target first and then going all for it. So we're a bit over and we're a bit under. So we're going to turn in a little bit here, just so we're not broadside on. Because being broadside on can give you a bit of a paddling, so you've got to be a bit careful of that. Uh, when you've got some angling, your armour does help you a little bit sometimes. Of course, being bow or stern on, it does mean you have less guns to put on bare. But if you angle your ship correctly, then you can usually get most guns to fire. As you see here, I have uh, all of my guns firing um, at a sort of relative angle here towards the enemy ships. Now I'm starting to get my eye in on this uh, damn username here. If you notice, just uh, it's a bit hard to see because it is black here, the, the correction system. Um, just trying to get that right. constantly reloading it and sort of just trying to get it into that right area. I've got some shots coming in there. So somebody's got us targeted and has got a bead on us as well so we've got to be a bit careful. Um, luckily that just went straight through the, the front of our ship. But we got some good hits there on that guy straight through the engine room. So his engine is damaged which is what we want to do. We've only damaged one boiler though, so he's still, still underpowered, just a little bit underpowered. Um, many of the destroyers that we'll get in game will have dual, boil, uh, dual boiler systems, so you know you won't be able to destroy the engine with one salvo most of the time. Unfortunately in the replay it seems the, uh, the aiming's a little bit off, but we get another hit on him there and managed to take out the second boiler. So that guy is going to be going quite slow, he's going to be pretty dead in the water soon. Get some hits on his uh, on his uh, main gun as well, which is good. And we've just got to watch out for ourselves now, just to make sure we don't get too, too wrapped up in it, because we're getting quite a few shots coming in at us. 
But the one thing this ship does is it takes a battering. Unlike the Italian destroyer, for instance, which just goes down so quickly, the American destroyers tend to be able to take a, a lot more punishment. So I'm just moving away from this battle now, and um, I think I've actually just started my smoke generator up. Just laying a bit of a smoke screen. Gonna fire off a few torpedoes just for just good luck, giving them a very wide angle of um, approach there. So giving a wide spread of torpedoes, it's really just blind aiming though. Chances are they'll miss, but you never know, you might get lucky. And it will cause people to uh, to avoid the area. Now I can see a ship in the gloom there. So setting off a few rounds just in case. And right here I'm actually using the um, HE shells, the fragmentation HE shells. Um, I thought I was using the arm um, piercing set. Obviously not, or maybe the replay is a little bit bugged. Uh, but you do you also have the um, self-destroying fragmentation shells for aircraft as well, which are quite useful. Um, not played around with them too much, but the big thing is is with these um, HE shells is they do have a lot of penetration and they do have a very high explosive mass to them. So angled on a ship, you will have problems penetrating sometimes, but when you're pretty much flat on if one of these goes through it's going to cause a lot more damage so we managed to set one guy on fire and we're just moving out of here now because we are taking some serious hits from the enemy now in this respect the naval combat can be pretty fun um, it's it sort of it has more fun to it than just sort of uh, mindlessly shooting at things. But it still just doesn't feel very weighty, I suppose. that That's the biggest thing. And that's probably the problem with using um, destroyers. Because although you do have some relatively good guns on them, they don't have that sort of... Uh, big density. Now we've got a torpedo hit there I think on one of the Fletchers. Um, so that's always nice and that's just what I mean about launching those torpedoes earlier on towards the mass of the fleet there. You're sort of guaranteed to cause a bit of damage which is nice. Now we've got another destroyer here. Um, And we're getting a few good hits. Quite a lot of them are going over, though, with this these salvos. But we have a lot of enemies on our tail. And as you can see, there's mo pretty much their whole fleet is now in our spawn. We've been pushed back so far. And this is what I mean about the spawn camping situation in this game, is you really don't have much chance, unless you win the advance the early push, you're not going to be able to do much, which does very much mean that the, your, uh, your game can be uh, over relatively quickly. Um, with these sort of smaller maps, and especially these maps with the islands in them, things like that, it sort of means that naval combat isn't quite as long as you would think it would be. Um, which it, it, it's, it's a bit of a shame really um, because in my opinion naval combat should be a lot more difficult it should be something that that goes on for a longer period of time now we are firing the armor piercing there we go uh, for some reason it looks like we're firing the HE shells um, <coughs> so we're keeping plugging away, as you can see, and we're getting peppered by a few shots as well ourselves here. But, as you can see, it just goes on forever, this kind of fight. 
there's just there is so much um, munitions fired by by both sides constantly trying to get their eye in on the target a torpedo there just off my bow somebody was trying my trick from earlier but I managed to avoid it being that they only launched a single torpedo it was relatively easy to dodge Keeping an eye out for planes as well. And trying to work out who's closest to me as well in this situation. Now, we're losing this game pretty badly at the moment. But we looks like we might be capping A as well as we've got B. C is a bit of a loss though with all those destroyers in there. And we've got a friend that's done a pretty good job of beaching there. It's a pretty impressive beach work my friend um, managed to completely get up on the beach as you can see we've got a massive hole in the uh, front of our ship as well so we are having some serious problems here we're starting to list pretty badly and we're taking water on at a vast rate this does also affect our gunning uh, because obviously our guns are a bit higher up so you only have so much depression with a ship Try and get a few more strikes on the enemy before we go down. Now what you want to do with uh, fighting the enemy ships is to really try and take out all the sections of their hull. Um, if you can turn sections black, that means that they're going to start having problems. If you turn three sections of a hull black, it will be a hull break and you'll take them out for good. But it is easier said than done, as I say. We've got a destroyer very close to us here. No shots are far, far over. So we're just trying to adjust those guns. But we're nice and on the waterline. And our auxiliary guns are starting to fire off. So we get a nice hit there on his ammunition. Take him out without too much problem. Looks like the German destroyer there, I think. A bit hard to tell the German or the Russian destroyer. Just going off the flag. Managed to take out his engine room. As you can see, our anti aircraft guns are lighting up on him as well. So, aiming is very important still in this game, but it's just very tricky, unfortunately, and you, you tend to to find you, more shots are just luck than anything else. Now, trying to go for that ammo there on the front of his ship, causing a few fires though, which is good. But as you can see, we're starting to suffer some real big damage here. One good thing about using the armor piercing is it will cause a lot more damage to certain items. Now we've taken out part of his ship there. So now we just need to try and take out a couple more sections of the ship. And he's starting to list and he's very low in the waterline as you can see. Torpedoes have just come out and we've managed to take him down. Or well, somebody else has actually taken it down. Did we? I think we took him down. Um, it's actually the Japanese destroyer, the Yugamo there, not the American, or not the German one. So, there's some torpedoes definitely incoming. So I've actually stopped my ship there and put it into reverse just to try and avoid that torpedo salvo. Got a plane coming in, but our... Uh, AI anti-aircraft guns are going to take care of that, hopefully. But as you see, we are in serious trouble here because, well, there's just so many enemies in our spawn. And, as I say, really, that that's pretty much the naval game at the moment, is it's just... Um, who can get to the spawn first with the most destroyers wins which is a bit unfortunate really but 
it, this wasn't the worst game I've had. It was actually reasonably fun. Um, the fact that I stayed alive, and as you can see, there, there's quite a lot of damage on this ship. It's 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 not looking good. Um, I, I don't like the chances of this ship being uh, back in service in the next few years. But it was a pretty fun game nonetheless, even with losing so badly. Destroyer combat does feel the most fun though, especially when you get some good hits on the enemy. Um, you sort of feel like you've actually done something because it's so tricky getting those, sh those uh, shots on target sometimes. Again, trying to get that ammunition there from this uh, this ship. We do manage to take out the front of the ship, but we do miss the ammunition rack. Uh, well, we hit the ammunition rack there, but we do nothing to it, of course, because you know War Thunder. Uh, set fire to the engine room. The game is almost over, though. Our secondaries are lighting up. See if we can do any more damage. Managed to take out the smokestack and the engine again. But it's pretty much game over from here. We've lost. But we do manage to uh, take out the S. Uh, no, we don't. I thought we did take it out. No, we didn't quite take it out, unfortunately. He took out our tribal class. And now that's game over. So I hope you enjoyed these videos. Um, as I said, look, naval combat is very... It still needs a lot of work done to it. Um, it's better than it was. But... Uh, it still just feels very iffy and messy. Um, survivability is good on some ships. Like the um, American ships, as you can see. It, they just take a huge pounding and just don't seem to die whereas other nation ships do tend to go down a lot easier and of course that's going to be the case in some regards but it still feels kind of unfair some nations are going to be at a real disadvantage um so i, I don't expect we're going to see naval released until next year i certainly hope not just because i feel like they if they do push it through fast they're going to have some problems and well, I feel they're going to have problems no matter what, but, you know, if they at least take their time with it, maybe we'll get less problems. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, have a lovely day, and I'll see you again next time. This is Squeezilla out. Bye-bye.